All right, guys, so I'm working here with Marley. Um, now, Marley's here primarily for manners issues. And so first off, whenever we meet a dog named Marley, I think it's like the dog in the movie. Um, and so, word of caution, folks. If you name your dog Marley, you're gonna have a dog with manners issues. But we'll get him over it. So, hi, big guy. Hi, Marley. And so, uh, there's, there's this command that I often, I often, I say that I'm a broken record because people will say things like, how do I get my dog to not bug my guests? Because that's an issue that Marley's got, right? Or how do I get my dog to not beg at the table? I don't know if that's an issue that Marley has or not. Or how do I get my dog to, you know, my kids are on the floor playing with toys and I don't want the dog stepping all over them. Or, you know, all these little manners issues. And I often talk about, how, well I often joke that I've never taught a dog to not beg at the table because I don't, I don't see any reason to do that. What I'm going to do is just teach the dog to lie on the bed. And so that's what I want to work on today, is showing you guys how to teach a dog a solid place command. Um, uh, because if we've got a dog with a good place command, then what we've got is a dog that we can have a dog not banging at the table, not bugging guests, or we can send the dog there when we're trying to clean up something on the floor, not get, you know, not get bothered by the dog. So the place command, there's essentially two parts. And so the first part is get the dog to go there. For that part, I'm going to help him on, come on, place. Place, place. Once he's on, good, good. No place, place, come on, place, come on, place. All the way, all the way. Get that foot on. There we go. Good, good. Once the dog is on, we teach what we call the implied stay, meaning we just want the dog to stay there. And I'm not going to keep saying stay, 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 or hold out my hand, stay, stay, stay. <laughs> Come on, okay, okay, yeah, there you go. So what I'm gonna do is help the dog on, place, good, come on, place, oh. And once the dog is on, like I say, it's implied that the dog stays, good, good. Why do I keep calling Marley a boy? Marley's not a boy. Marley's a girl. I was thinking that in my mind, I'm like, Marley in the movie is a boy, isn't it? I think so. Gotcha. <laughs> That's why you got me all confused. It's like Marley, Marley, it's a, it's a unisex thing. Gotcha. That's what I was thinking. I was like, all right, movie, Marley, no, you're a girl. Sorry. Sorry, Marley. <laughs> I've confused your gender. Good. No, place. Place. Good. And so the second that Marley moves, I give a little correction with the leash. Now, we're also doing e-collar training, and so we're going to use a little bit of stimulation with the e-collar to help the dog back on. But I find that nearly every dog that we meet knows how to stay in some fashion, you know, before we ever start training. Like, the owner can probably, like, have the dog sit and say, stay, stay, and the dog might stay for a minute or two or 30 seconds or whatever. So almost every dog knows how to kind of stay, but rarely do, you, do we ever meet a dog that, for the first time, has any sort of, uh, any sort of functionality with that. You know, every time um, that, they, that they want the dog to stay, the dog's too excited, things like that. So I always tell people to look at, what is your response when the dog stops staying. And for most folks, it's simply to remind. And so what, most, what would most folks do here is they would tell the dog to stay, 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 and when the dog breaks, no, 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 stay, 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 and they would remind. And reminding doesn't really get the dog very far. Reminding is kind of like nagging. And nagging is like, I don't know, nagging doesn't work very well, sorry. Um, somebody tell my wife. It doesn't get a dog very far. And so if we, you know, simply nag, we're not going to get anywhere. But if the dog gets off and breaks, and I give a little correction, and I communicate, no, no, I don't want you to move, that's where we start to get a dog that understands how to stay put. Now, Marley might move here any second. I'm going a little bit too far. But generally speaking, we talk about the three Ds when we're having a dog do anything. Distance, duration, distraction. So we want to build distance, want to build duration, build distraction. So right now, there's actually a decent amount of distractions for Marley. Marley's new. I think been here like two days. And so there's a lot of distraction going on. Good. You know, um, uh, but I'm, so I'm not gonna get too far on distance and I'm not gonna get too far on duration. So like I can say here very quickly, good job Marley. You know, Marley wouldn't stay two days ago when she came in. Very quickly, I think there's only a couple sessions on the place command for her. She's already staying quite well. Now again, she might move here any second. <laughs> but you can tell like her understanding of the command is already pretty clear 
you know, she's staying put, she's trying to keep her eyes on me and recognizing. Now, she didn't understand the command. When I turned, when I went around, you know, she would probably get up and try to like follow me, but mentally she's like, all right, let me stay put. What a good girl. Yes. Good, good, good. Okay, okay. Good. All right, let me try this one more time. So I'm not using any stimulation. I'm not using any correction, just helping on place. So the first part's free. Good. And then the dog stays put, we're in good shape. Now, one last tip before we finish this video is I like to, um, I like to do what we call integration training because eventually we might want the dog to stay there for two hours. You might have a, a dinner party. You might take your dog to the office. You might, you know, you might do stuff like that. So you might want two or three hour place command. Me personally, I'm never going to sit and watch a dog for two or three hours. I have better things to do. Not many, but I have some better things to do. And so what I'm going to do is integrate the training. So if I'm sitting down to watch a movie, I'll probably put the bed, over, you know, 10 feet over there and work on my place command. Now, I might, my movie might be interrupted because I might be up and down. Or maybe I'm gonna do this while I eat dinner, or while I read a book, or while I sit down to work on the computer. These are moments when I'm gonna work on it. That's another issue that a lot of people do, is they never get a really long stay command because their version of working on stay is sit, stay, stay, stay. All right, good job, right? And they release the dog. And so the dog's only understanding of stay is in like little 30 second bursts. What we want to do is we want to make sure that you know we're helping the dog, um, you know, build longevity, build duration in these things, and you can do that through integration training. Integrate with what you're already doing. Recognize that what you're doing might get interrupted, but soon you're going to have a dog that you know. Soon we'll have a dog that can stay put for two hours. So, all right, I'll go do it with your dogs.